In this video, I want to talk about my experience running a ZFS storage pool on a Raspberry Pi 3. The first thing you might wonder is, can you even run ZFS on a Raspberry Pi 3? And the answer to that question is yes. I was able to successfully set up a ZFS pool with a three-way mirror. In this enclosure, I have three eight terabyte hard drives all set to mirror each other. I've successfully loaded about four and a half terabytes of data onto the storage bay through the Raspberry Pi 3. I was able to successfully do a scrub, then I resilvered a drive, and then I did my own application level checksum of the data. Throughout this process, I did not encounter any bit flips or data integrity errors. But on the very last step, I did experience one read timeout on one of the drives. I suspect this might actually be an issue with one of the drives, although it might have something to do with the USB cable connection. Now, the process of writing to the storage pool from a Raspberry Pi 3 is incredibly slow. Read and write speeds are limited to about 20 megabytes a second. This is a limitation of the USB 2.0 interface that's offered by the Raspberry Pi 3. In order to use ZFS on the Raspberry Pi, I of course need an operating system that can run it. Some of you may be surprised to learn that you can actually run Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi. So the output from this command here shows the exact version of Ubuntu that I'm running. And to install ZFS, I ran this command. Now, before I even set up the ZFS pool, I decided to run bad blocks on one of the eight terabyte drives that I was using. As you can see, the write speed here is incredibly slow at around 24 megabytes a second. And that of course is expected with USB 2.0. And this here is just an example of the command that I used to run bad blocks and test the drive. And what we're looking at here is the output from running the time command along with bad blocks. So it took 175 hours to finish running bad blocks, which comes out to just over seven days. So I didn't say it would be fast. And this is for testing an eight terabyte hard drive. Here are some very rough notes of some of the commands that I used when setting up the ZFS pool. This here is the command that I used to actually set up the pool. Okay, so here I'm gonna go through the process of actually setting up the pool. So here I'm just checking to see the ID of the different disks that are available. So currently I have two eight terabyte drives in the storage bay. And those are SDA and SDB. So now I'm just creating a root level folder where I can mount and access the ZFS pool. Okay, let's try to create the pool. So that took a minute, but it finished creating the pool. So I just have an exact mirror of both eight terabyte drives and I've got 7.27 terabytes usable. At this point, I've just finished rebooting the Pi because I installed another eight terabyte drive in the storage bay. So the other eight terabyte disk that I just put in there has all my files on an ext4 file system. And since I've rebooted, SDA, SDB, and SDC have been renamed. So the pool contains SDB and SDC, and all my files are stored on SDA1. So I've just mounted my files onto slash MNT, and you can see in the my third ZFS pool, it's basically empty. So in just a minute, I'm gonna copy my files there. And I'm gonna install rsync so I can see some progress and possibly resume the copy if it fails halfway through. So here is my rsync command that I'm about to run. So here's a look at the transfer speed. As you can see, the transfer speed is moving at a blazing eight megabytes a second. Once again, that slow speed is expected because of the USB 2.0 interface. I'm not actually sure about the numbers that are reported here, but I think that's actually writes onto the ZFS pool. So technically there's twice as much as that going over the USB interface because it's writing to two disks at once. And here's a view of the CPU and memory usage of rsync on the Raspberry Pi. And here is a view of the output from the time command after the rsync copy completed. So I think I had around three and a half terabytes of data there. And to copy that onto the pool, it took 118 hours, which is just under five days. And here is the Z pool status after finishing the rsync copy to move all the data into the pool. And for completeness, at this point, I copied on another 484 gigabytes of data and that took 14 hours. And then I copied another few hundred gigs of data and that took 13 hours. It's good to see that there are no errors. So once again, there are all the disks. There are three eight terabyte disks in there. Two of them are in the ZFS pool and one of them, SDA, that has the ext4 file system on it. So dev SDA, that is the one that I want to add to the pool. So currently it has just a normal Linux file system on it. Now, despite Googling a lot, I could not find a clear description that anyone had written about how to add a new disk to an existing mirror pool. So what I want to end up with is a three-way mirror. I want three identical copies on each of the disks, and I tried this syntax. I figured maybe the right way to do it was to specify the block device and address it using the VDEV name, but that did not work. Now, eventually I thought that I almost had it when I saw this error message. One of the other things that I wanted to test 
was to see what would happen if you tried to add a block device into a ZFS pool if it already had, say, an ext4 file system on it without wiping it first. I'm glad to see that this message appears because it means that you are less likely to accidentally delete all of your data by adding another file system into your pool by accident. As you can see from that error message, that command also doesn't work. And I eventually figured out that what I have to do is specify something like a destination and source block device. So I had to pick one of the block devices that are already in the pool and then reference the new block device that I want to add to the pool. So as you can see here, it is resilvering SDA, which makes sense because it's getting reformatted with ZFS in the pool under mirror zero. So here's a look at the status LEDs on the storage bay while the resilvering was in progress. As you can see, it looks like most of the activity was localized to two of the disks, which makes sense because it seems like the way that ZFS populates the extra disk in the mirror is to use one of the other disks in the mirror instead of both of them. So the resilvering has finished. It took three days and eight hours, and it's good to see that there are no errors on the pool. So next I decided to run a scrub from the Raspberry Pi, just to see if that would trigger up any weird error cases. And here is a look at the read speeds while running the scrub. And the next morning I decided to check for the ETA on the scrub, and it was predicting four days, 13 hours. So it is now five days later, and the scrub has finished. And once again, there are no read, write, or checksum errors, so that's good. Now I don't actually trust ZFS yet. One of the first things that I did after I ran the scrub was my own integrity check of the files. For most of my big files, I maintain an external MD5 checksum, so I thought this would be a good stress test to effectively do my own manual scrub and verify all the checksums. After I did this, I found that all of the files were fine, but to my surprise, I actually got one read error on the ZFS pool. I did a little bit of investigation, and I found in var log syslog the following statements. So it looks like one of my drives is acting up a bit. Although it doesn't seem to have any pending sectors, it does seem to be having a bit more trouble reading from the drive than the other two. I also found a log statement that seems to imply that the error that was noted by ZFS is probably due to this timeout. It looks like one of the read operations on this drive timed out at 31,000 milliseconds. So that's around 31 seconds for a hard drive read, which is pretty slow. I'll be keeping an eye on this drive, but I think it might be fine for now. And if not, I still have two other copies on this pool. Now in the ZFS status, it says one or more devices has experienced an unrecoverable error. An attempt was made to correct the error. Applications are unaffected. The way I interpret this statement is that one of the drives itself had its own internal unrecoverable error. Because of the redundancy that I have in the ZFS pool, the ZFS file system was able to recover without error. So that's why applications are unaffected and the data should still be fine. In this case, since the read error was a timeout, the ZFS file system was probably able to route the read request to a different disk that was able to reply faster with the correct data. Now in my case, I believe that I can ignore that error, so I am running ZPool clear on that pool on that device, and now that error flag has gone away. Now it looks like this storage bay is currently out of stock, but I paid $180 for this. Something else that I should mention about this storage bay is that I read some reviews where people complained about some sort of auto power down feature for the disks if you're not interacting with them. Some people suggested that this storage bay was not a good choice for ZFS. In my case, I don't actually use it as a network attached storage or anything. I only use it for backing things up and I keep it powered off most of the time. I did experience an issue where if I try running smart tests on the disk, then it seems to abort them prematurely. But if I write a little while loop that interacts with the block device every few minutes or so, then the smart test is able to complete successfully. So in summary, you can run ZFS on a Raspberry Pi 3, although I don't necessarily recommend doing so if your data is super important. The Raspberry Pi 3 does not have ECC memory, and the USB 2.0 interface is pretty flaky. Another issue is because it takes so much time to either read or write from the disks, if you have to resilver them, it's going to take forever, and that's going to increase the amount of time where you could potentially have some other kind of failure. Or in my case, you may find that the power goes out every once in a while wherever you live. If that happens in the middle of a transfer, it's probably going to cause problems. Having said that, this is a good low-cost way to get your feet wet with ZFS. And I think it's actually a testament to how good ZFS is at this point. The fact that you can install it with basically no performance tuning at all, and it'll work right out of the box on a Raspberry Pi 3.